I'm sick of it. I've had it with this guy. I am so frustrated. I've had an imposter in my life that's been pretending to be me for years. He's impacted every area of life that I care about. And I've been trying to find a way to catch him. And I finally found a way to trick him. And I know it's going to work. And I'm going to use this video to expose him. You see, I'm not here to mess around. I'm a man on a mission. I want to leave this world a better place. The world is warming. Political tensions are rising. I want to teach people how to live healthier lives with greater abundance. And if there's some time left, I want to see the beauty that the world has to offer. See, if I put a dent in any of these things, I could die a happy man. I definitely have aspirations abound. Does this sound familiar? If so, stay with me. To accomplish my goals and all the things that I need to do, I learned that it's best to plan my day ahead of time rather than to live moment by moment. So during a quiet time of the day, I lay out what I'm going to do tomorrow. I go to bed with a solid plan and I'm excited about all what I'm going to get done tomorrow. But this is what happens. I wake up and right away the whole day feels a bit off. Is that really eight hours of sleep? It only seemed like four. I take a pee, brush my teeth, and took a shower. I feel sluggish. Coffee. The coffee helped, but I still don't feel the workout. Let me just do it later. Come on, boy, let's go for a walk. Yeah. And because I was a bit slower, I'm now in a hurry. I felt guilty for not giving him the time that he really deserves, but I had to go. I put him inside and got ready for my errands. thing on my list is to get fuel. Next I'm to meet my friend Maria. She's an engineer that has opened five coffee shops and bakeries in the last few years. She just opened Freya Bakery Cafe in Seattle's famous Pike Place Market. Her coffee and her breads are out of this world. She's looking for a little camera with which she can post her products on Instagram. And I have one she can try. Hi. Hey, I'm looking for Maria. Maria? Yeah. I'll grab it for you. Thank you. tripod you got it this the one yeah that's the one. Oh, sweet i like so, it so you know this one i'm just giving you the tripod uh as part of it and then see if you like the little camera if not give it back to me okay sweet well, thank, thank you. you hey see you next time bye see you soon. hey big girl before you leave take this please <laughs> awesome and this is for of tina course. favorite stores in Seattle. So in summary, I did get gas. I dropped off my camera at Maria, though I did come home with bread, even though that is not on my diet right now. I also didn't get to exercise today. 
I did get the groceries, though I added a couple of little chocolates at the end, which also is not on my diet. Even though I got most or some things done on my list, on days like that, I was left disappointed knowing that I had left something on the table. So the imposter that I was talking about is that voice in my head that is constantly renegotiating and reevaluating things that I've already decided on, things that I really want to do. And if I don't do them, I will regret not doing them. But it is in the moment that I've scheduled to do something or said I was going to do something that that little voice really starts to talk. And it has an opinion. It has an opinion whether I should do it or maybe I should, you know, do a little, take a little shortcut. But these are things I've already decided and I'm clear that I want to do them. Yet that voice shows up. See, when I ask my dog to sit, it sits. When I ask it to lay down, it lays down. When I tell myself this is what I want to do and this is how I want to do it, it really automatically starts renegotiating it and reevaluating whether this is the right time or maybe I should do it tomorrow. You know, it's always something. It never, ever, ever shuts up. And then that voice has the audacity to make me think that it's me that is thinking. Are you kidding me? I clearly decided what I wanted to do. I clearly decided how I want to do it. And if I don't, I will regret it. Are you following me? And by the way, I've coached enough people to know that you're likely to have a little voice in your head like that too. So now I will show you how I trick that imposter, that renegotiator in my head. I very carefully create my list of what to do the next day. I don't know how long I will live, but I want to make sure that what I do is an expression of me and what it is that I'm up to. And if not, it doesn't belong on my list. Now I realize that I put a lot of things on my list that were about proving myself to myself or proving myself to others. And so I had a, a, a hidden agenda. And then I realized that those really don't belong on my list at all. Everything on my list needs to provide me more freedom, more peace of mind, and really needs to contribute to my fulfillment. If not, I'm going to say no. And then I envision how I'm going to do it tomorrow. Like how, what the day is going to look like. And I make sure that it's possible for me to do the things that I'm committed to. But I will know if I don't do it, I will regret it tomorrow night. So when those thoughts show up, I just let them be. I don't do anything with them. I'm grateful for them because if I wouldn't have them, I probably wouldn't be alive. They will always be there, but they're not me. Those automatic thoughts are part of a system that is there to protect me. And when I get distracted by them or I get distracted by something else, I just forgive myself. I go back to my list and I go back to doing and creating my day as I intended to create it. And what I get done, I get done. And what I don't get done, I don't get done. It's not about being perfect. It's about being more effective than I otherwise would be. So good. So good.